service at 6 p.m. That's a communion service uh, and Phil uh, will be speaking at that. Next week we have our normal Sunday services, morning uh, and, and evening. Um, just a little a little cut, it's good to have Kevin uh, and Angela uh, back with us this morning. Or just Kevin, no Angela's there. No. <laughs> <laughs> we miss you. It's got a little card. Uh, from, from Kevin and Angela, it says this, to our brothers and sisters at Hope Church, thank you so much for the cards, flowers, chocolates, tea, cake, telephone calls, expressions of kindness, and chiefly your prayers during the last couple of weeks. All, pra all praise and glory be to our God, and with our love in Jesus, Kevin and Angela. Also good to have uh, the group who went to CCYC back. Uh, I think Nick's just going to give a little update uh, about how that went. Only to say, we survived. Um, <laughs> and thank you so much for your prayers. It's the place where I experience the presence and the power of God the most. And it's a privilege to be there. Um, we have five young people commit their lives to Jesus for the first time, um, including one of our own. Who's probably asleep this morning, not Amy. So it's just, just oh, Amy. She's just here and she's coming in. Yeah, so we had an exciting time. So she made it out of bed this morning. Well done, Amy. Yeah. So there will be loads of pictures and all sorts of stuff going on. Um, but yeah, heaven rules. We were looking at the Ten Commandments and we had a great, great time. So we'll update you when I'm a little bit more awake. Let's just let's just bow our heads uh, and let's pray uh, before we before we lift our voices to the Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, we uh, we come before you this morning with thankful hearts. Uh, Lord, it's so encouraging just to hear there of uh, what happened on that camp uh, up in Cumbria. Uh, those five uh, young wives uh, committed uh, themselves to the Lord Jesus, and we. Uh, we just ask uh, that that seed of the gospel that's been sown in their hearts, that it would grow. And we pray that they con get connected to a good church uh, and that they be discipled and encouraged uh, and that they grow in their faith. Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you that you have blessed us with all the things that we need to live a godly life in Christ Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that we uh, that you've made yourself known through your Son, the Lord Jesus. We thank you for how he died on the cross uh, to save sinners like us. And that three days later he rose again. And, and because of that, we can be sure that on that day when he comes back, he will take us to be with himself. May we, we, may we never grow tired of the gospel. Uh, please move our hearts this morning. Remove anything, any distractions, any wandering thoughts. And that prevent us from hearing your word, Lord. And please strip us back, uh, remove the front, uh, remove the masks that we often put on, uh, make us look so good on the outside. Uh, we want to be open and honest before you, our Heavenly Father. Uh, please give us a fresh hunger and desire for the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, we pray this in your name. Amen. Uh, at this point, let's stand and, and sing uh, our first song, Oh Great God, and I stand there straight up at uh, Thank you. 
morning, everybody. Good morning. Okay, I'm, I'm not used to talking to a crowd of grown-ups. <laughs> so just, just show me where all the children are. Can you all the children give me a wave, please? Okay. Okay, that's fine. Now, just to wake everybody up, can all those people who used to be children give me a wave, please? Okay. Not bad. Okay. Well, I've, I've got a, oh, yes, just a few. Can you tell me, has anybody here seen my scruffy? This is, this is scruffy. Anybody? Hands in the air, you seen my scruffy? Right, I don't think he's been here, has he? Pardon? He didn't want to be here. <laughs> Why not? They're laughing too much. They're not laughing at you. Are you laughing at him? No. You will be. <laughs> okay, okay. So, yeah, I'll, I'll put him away. <coughs> You'll see him later. But well, first of all, um, we have a verse I want us to look at. And I've got, I think Sue, you picked some people to come out and, and read this for us. Uh, Ryan, Matthew, and Nathan. <coughs> Oh, right, here you go. Give us right. radio mic. Please. Radio mic, okay. Thank you. Is it? There you go. Go for it. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Well read, everybody. Right. Can you put them down there? Give them a Thank, you. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, have you noticed? We've got one word there that is in red. What is it? Sin. Right, can somebody tell me what that means? What is sin? Anybody? Tell me what a sin is. I'll tell you what, first of all. Tell me a sin. Go on. Disobeying your parents. That's, yes, the fifth commandment, isn't it? Fifth commandment. Uh, honor your parents. Right, so that's one. Is, is lying a sin? Yes. Uh, is stealing a sin? Yes. Is not loving God a sin? Okay, okay. So when we look at sin, what we can think of is all the things that we do that God says we shouldn't do and all the things that we don't do that God says we should do. Right? So we're thinking of sin. Now, there was a few other words in there, wasn't there? That were, but look at these other things. Deceive. Let's have a look. I'll tell you what, this is what we're going to do. We've got all these words deceive, confess, faithful, just, forgive, cleanse, unrighteousness. There's a good one. Give me another word for deceive. And it's, it might be the best word for deceive going, but if it's not my word, it's not going up. Okay, another word for deceive. Hmm. Anybody? Who said that? Trick. Yes. Well done. Trick is a word for deceive. However, uh, I did try to find one word, simple word for it, and it's just I didn't find it possible. But how about two words that mean to confess? Oh, no. Come on, come on, I'm deaf. You've got to shut oh. up. Own up. Oh, you're really good at this. Right, okay. Own up. Faithful, I have had to make up a word for this. <laughs> Trustable. <laughs> Trustable. <laughs> it's the best I could come on. Anybody got a better one? One word, let me know after. Okay. Just. A word for just. 
Forgive. Two, oh, two words. Two oh, words. Let off. Who said? Come on, then. Shout it out. That's good. Let, let off. off. Let's let's see all those people who are clever. When you put your hand in the air, you shout it out, and we can say you're clever. <laughs> Forgive. Oh, sorry. I'm, yeah, yeah. Still let off. We've not changed that one. It's still let off. Okay. Hey, you think you think these guys? Do, do they look really re raring to go after a week at, at camp? Or do they look ready for bed? No. No. Look, it's brushing off. <laughs> right, okay. What have we got? Cleanse. Clean, that's an easy one, isn't it? Or wash is another one. Unrighteousness. Wrongdoing. Okay. Right. So, we're going to have to think about that. So, we could say, if we say we have no sin, and we talked about that, we trick ourselves, and the truth is not in us, if we own up, to our sins, he is trustable and fair to let us off of our sins and to clean us from all unrighteousness, so all wrong doing. If we say we haven't sinned, we make him alive, and his word is not in us. Pardon, Scruffy, you're just a minute. Scruffy's got a word to say. Right, okay, right, it's going to have to come out. Have you met Scruffy before? Do you know somebody said, oh, pardon, I can't tell what you're saying. You're mumbling, why are you mumbling? You're not, I'm not in your house. Oh, he's got a ball in his mouth. Right, okay. You've got a trick. You're going to trick me? No, you're not. Oh, no, you're not. Look, well, before you do the trick, let's take that ball out of your mouth, okay? Okay, come here, come here. Right. Now, what's the trick? <laughs> oh, come here. Tell me the trick now. <laughs> Listen, will you stop messing around? You've got a ball in your mouth. Have you got a ball in the mouth? You're not saying. <laughs> Let me have a look. Open up. <laughs> you have, haven't you? Okay. So give me the ball. Give, give, give. <laughs> right. So, so you're going to do me a trick. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. That was the trick. Okay, well done. So he tricked me. Okay, say goodbye. We haven't got time to talk to Scruffy. You want to talk to Scruffy later? Come and see me, okay? You might not feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> say goodbye, Scruffy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, then. Okay, listen. He tricked. He's tricked. He's tricked. Last time I was at Sarah's and Nick's, and Abigail's and Christopher's. They had these things out. What are they? These, these things. Oh, yeah. So, these things. Right? I mean, who can do these? Can you do one? How about this? So, this is already done. This one's already done. Right. This one is the most weirdest thing I've ever seen. Does it actually go? Yeah. And, and this is meant to be a Rubik's snake? Okay. It's a circle. Uh, who thinks they can do with that? Right. Go on then, let's show, show me. The circle one. Whatever, whichever one you want. Right? Right, go on. Because I was watching, and Sarah, she's like, oh, in fact, somebody said, oh, I, I can't get this one. And Sarah went, <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Crazy. Right. Well, stand up and show us. Come on, buddy. Oh, he can't stand up. 
it's all right, it's, it's to tell you. <laughs> well, I'll t let me tell you, there are at least three ways of doing these. The first one is you take all the stickers off. Has <laughs> anybody done that one? Yeah. Yes, right, that, that's a good one. This, the second one is to take it all apart. Yeah. Now I can do both of them just about, right? And put it back together in the right place. But when they do all this stuff, you know, they're twisting here and they're twisting there, and they're twisting here and they're twisting there and they're twisting here like that. Doesn't work for me. Does not work for me. Wouldn't it be great? And the reason I'm starting to talk about this and thinking, do you know there's things in there that we, should, we need to do and we need to get right? Like, we're not supposed to sin, but we do. How are we going to handle that? Have you done it? Yeah. Oh, good grief. Right. What have you done? Can I sing it? Look at that. Nice. I just feel people show off when they do it. <laughs> so, so, wouldn't it be great? If instead of having to do all that twiddling and all that, that stuff. Oh, I don't think that's right. Hang on. Ah, that's better. <laughs> ah, ah, now that works. Then you just say, could you do it for me please? <laughs> right, okay. I've only just got this and I don't really know how it looks myself. <laughs> and I don't know what I'm scared to do. But, but anyway. Anyway, would it be great, lad? <laughs> I've got a story to tell you. Okay, I've got a story to tell you. There was this man, and he, he went to a, a synagogue. Now, a synagogue is like a church, and it's like just they pray, they read the Bible, um, they sing psalms or songs, and also they might have parties, birthday parties. Well, this man came in into this synagogue, and Jesus was there, and Jesus saw him, and this man had something wrong with one of his hands. He said it had a withered or a shriveled hand, so I can't imagine what it was like. But he wanted to be able to work with it. He wanted to be able to use it, a shriveled hand. And Jesus said to this man, stand up. <coughs> and I thought, ooh. That might be a tough one, that. Stand up. I wonder if he went, well, I'll stand up, but I'll put my hands in my pocket. Because you know, you, you know what people are like. You know, he, he could have grown, I don't know how long he had that, but he could have grown up thinking, God, I am just so fed up with people stirring out my hand. So I'll hide it. I'll keep it in my pocket. Maybe he didn't want to stand up in front of anybody because he thought, I'm not too sure I like that idea. But Jesus is asking him to stand up. Here's a good thing. He might have been embarrassed about it. He might have been just fed up with people staring at him and saying, No, I don't know. But in those days, a lot of people thought that if you had something wrong with you like that, it was your fault. Right? So there was a time when Jesus. Uh, healed a blind, well, there was this man who'd been born blind, and his disciples said to, said to him, Jesus, who did the wrong thing? Who sinned? Was it him? Because that's a tough one if, if he was born blind. Was it him? Did he sin before he was born? Or is it his parents? Is it because of his parents' sin? And Jesus said, it was neither. We well, see a lot of people thought that. And this man may well have thought that. That if I show everybody, when they look at that, they're thinking, you've done something wrong, something really bad. And maybe he's thinking that I am a bad person. I am a bad person. And Jesus had asked him to stand up in front of everybody. And Jesus had said to him, show me your hand. Children and ex-children. Ever seen this? Go on the playground and there's a, say let's say a teacher, it could be a dinner maybe, a teacher 
and the teacher's talking to two, two children that she's trying to sort something out. Yeah, it, it happens a lot. Right, right. Well, let's imagine the, there's, this, there's this lad and this teacher, and he goes to the teacher and says, Excuse me, miss. Yes, what is it? That girl over there, she stole my rubber. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's a terrible like, accusation. I, 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 you, you shouldn't call people thieves like this. What are you doing? Here? She stole my rubber. She's got it though. She came up to me. She said, Give me your rubber, I'll fuck you. And then she snatched it. Oh, really? Well, that's even more serious than that. That's what? Robbery with violence. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, just, she said, just a minute. And she called, she said, come here, love, come here. This lad here, he says, you've got his rubber. Have you got his rubber? And she has. Right. She's got it in her hand. And she says, no, miss. <laughs> You've not got his rubber? No, miss! <laughs> <laughs> and so the teacher says, show me your hand. Now, come on. She's got it in her hand. Who thinks she's going to show the one, the hand that's got the rubber in? Who thinks she's going to show the hand that hasn't got the rubber in? Well, she shows the hand that hasn't got the rubber in. <laughs> See, miss, I haven't got his rubber. Well, the teacher says, no. Show me your other hand. But goes on to this. Back of her. <laughs> she swaps hands. I haven't got it, miss. Show me a hand. Show, show me. See, double cheek. I haven't got it, miss. I didn't take his rubber. Well, the teacher says, no. Show me both your hands. It goes on to that as well. She gets the rubber and she goes. <laughs> and it lands on the floor next to this other girl who's been listening in. I haven't got it. Show me both your hands. Show me. I... <laughs> Show me both your hands. <laughs> Now then, Miss, it's that girl over there. Right? <coughs> she stole it. Oh, look, it's on the floor. She just dropped it. Right. Do you think the teacher's cruel? No. <coughs> Problem she knew before it, any evidence came out, she, I know this girl. Now, I don't want to judge, prejudge, but I know this girl. Right? No, the teacher wasn't. She knew what the teacher was wanting to do. The teacher was wanting that girl to own up, to confess. It's always good to confess, but she wouldn't. Why do you think she did? At the beginning, when the teacher said, "Have you got a job?" Why do you, do you think she said, "Yes, Miss, I'm sorry, I did it, and I was wrong, and I deserve to be punished. I'm very sorry." Why did she do that? You're too embarrassed. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Another reason, anybody? Yes? Because she didn't want to get punished. She didn't want to get in trouble, did she? Did you give another one? She didn't want anyone thinking she was a bad person or whatever. Yeah. 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 Very good. I'll just tell you another one. She wanted to keep the rubber. <laughs> okay. So, she, right. And she's <coughs> not cool. And now she's in bigger trouble now, isn't she? Because, first of all, it was robbery with violence. Now she's been telling lies to the teacher. And what's more, if that wasn't enough, she's tried to put the blame on somebody else. She's in huge trouble now. Right? Okay. But you see the reasons. Now there's this man, and he's got this withered hand. And Jesus has said, show me your hand. And he's thinking, that's like telling Jesus I'm a really bad person. 
Because that's what people say. <laughs> who thinks when Jesus said, show me your hand? Who thinks he might have showed him the other hand? He said, no, nothing wrong with me. No, he didn't. Jesus said, show me your hand. Stretch out your hand. And the, the man must have trusted Jesus. Because he trusted, he stretched out his hand. And he stretched out his hand. Jesus made it better. Do you know, if he hadn't shown it to Jesus, it wouldn't have had his hand made better. Now then, okay, what was our verse? If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. <coughs> if we say we have sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. Boys and girls, mothers and dads, and everybody else, we're all sinners. And it's not just, I told a lie. It's, I did it because I wanted to. It's not just, I stole. I stole it because I wanted to steal. It's what's in here. Oh dear, sorry about it. It's in my heart. In other words, I do things wrong because I'm wrong inside. There's nothing good in me. But Jesus wants us, the Hulk wants us to own up. He wants us to own up. If we don't own up, we won't be let off. If we don't own up, we won't be made better. Now, there's nothing wrong with my hand. There's a lot wrong with my heart. And that the only way my heart can be changed is if I admit to Jesus, admit to God, that I'm really, really bad. Because I am. To be honest, don't try and hide it. Don't try and get out of it. Be honest. And it's not nice to be honest with God until you do it. And then you realize that because Jesus died for us, God can be what he is. He can be fair and he can let us off. You know, when I read that, I used to think uh, God is faithful and just to forgive us. See, I don't want God to be just with me. If he gives me what I deserve, I'm in big trouble. Right? No. God is being fair to Jesus. Because this was the plan. God said, Jesus, if you will die for these people, you give your life for the things they've done wrong, you take their punishment, and when they come to me, and they own up, I promise I'll forgive them. Right. So God's being fair to Jesus. That's why he can forgive us. Now, do you know something? I've got to show you something. Because there's something about that unrighteousness. And I'll tell you something. When I saw that unrighteousness, I thought, I thought it just meant God washes us clean. Now, look. Supposing you were supposed to have um, a competition and the competition was you had to colour in a colouring book and you had to do a really good job, okay? This fantastic job, right? Well, I'm going to show you after we've done a song what you can do about that. So, did we have a song lined up? Were you going to do some actions? Oh, yeah. Right, <laughs> right, okay. Uh, does anybody know the actions for thanking Jesus? Yes. I didn't anybody do that. Anybody want to come and help me? Please just call me so you can help me. Do you know the actions? Do you want to come and help me? Are we ready?
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. He went to Calvary. You went to Calvary. Yeah, he spoke to the cross. The you died for me. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. You went to Calvary. The you died for me. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Rose up from the grave. <laughs> You aim for your arm like that, and then you come up like a flower growing out of the ground. You do it twice. You rose up from the grave to me new life you gave. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. You rose up from the grave to me new life you Thank you, Lord, for loving me. You're coming back again. Yeah, go away. Go away and then come back. Back. Okay. And then we with you shall reign. That's like kings and queens. You put a crown on me. Okay. You're coming back again. And we with you shall reign. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. You're coming back again, and we with you shall reign. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. First verse. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Do you know, do you know something? Apart from those people who've gone to camp, stand up and sing the last verse again. Come on. Everybody stand up. Come on, move. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Okay, thank you. Where was I? Oh, yes. Just imagine, what was I saying? Now you had a competition, right? And you had to fill in the coloring book, but it had to be perfect, right? And this is what you did. This is, this is, that's what you did. You made a complete mess of it. Oh, that one's not too, well, yeah, it is bad, isn't it? And you didn't finish it all either. Do you think you'd get a prize? No, of course not. That, that is terrible. But listen, listen. When God says we have to have righteousness, we have to have right doing, not wrong doing, it means we've got to be perfect. Absolutely perfect. So that would have to be beautiful. It would have to be coloured in. If it was, you can put it to this, it would have to be coloured in perfectly. But what it means is, never tell lies, never steal, never disobey our parents, we're never lazy, we're never grumpy, we're never selfish, we're never mean. 
We're always opening the door. We're always kind. We're always generous. In other words, we will have to be like Jesus. So we, none of us have been. been no good with it. And God said, supposing that was God's, well, if it was just a competition, okay. But that God says, that's, that's how you get to heaven. Well, then, we can't get there, then. We can't get there. We all throw things wrong. Wouldn't it be wonderful, though, if whoever was running the competition said, you know something, I'm going to wipe it all away. I'm going to get rid Ta-da! Just had one of those moments then. Like, oh, I'm going to wipe it all away. Let's start again. You'd think that would be great, wouldn't it? Jesus washes the widows away, washes the sins away. And that would be great. But you know, the trouble is, we're going to start again. We're going to start again, aren't we? Oh, well, wash it away. Wash it away. Please, rub it going. Okay. So, this is the thing. Jesus forgives us when we've done wrong. If we're trusted in Jesus, because of what Jesus has done, God will say, I've wiped it all away. But he doesn't leave it there because he knows what we're like. He says, that's not good enough. You don't have to have no wrongdoing. You've got to have right doing. So, oh, how about let's do it here for you. Let's, let's do it for you. Let me, the competition man says, I'll do it for you. And you can put it in as yours. And for some reason or other, that's okay with him. Right, right. Wouldn't be okay with me. But you know, God says, I can do that. When we come to God, now every day we need to confess what we've done wrong. And he'll wash us clean from that day. But in heaven, if we've come to God because of what Jesus has done, and we've said, you know, this is what I am. But I know Jesus died for me. And I'm going to live for Jesus. Well, you know, that's how it all fits together. God looks at you in heaven. And he says, you've got a perfect record. You look like Jesus. You look like Jesus. Now then, if you want to know how that's done afterwards, well, I'm not going to tell you, so you'll have to find somebody else. <laughs> okay. So... So let's just move, let's just move on here. Right. So here we go. So we got all that. So that's the thing that word says unrighteousness. It's not good enough just to have our sins wiped away. It's brilliant. <coughs> but then God does more. He puts us right with Himself, and that is absolutely fantastic. I just want to pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you that you've done everything for us. We are guilty sinners, sinners from our heart. We do things wrong because we want to. That's where we've been. We want to thank you that you made a way you made a way for us to be forgiven. Jesus, thank you that you willingly came and you gave your life for us. And you took the punishment for the things that we've done wrong. And because we trust in you, we've been washed clean. And thank you because you also lived your life perfectly. That that life <coughs> is given to us. And we thank you for that. Lord, we thank you for the miracle of forgiving us and making us your children and of making us like Jesus. We pray in his name. Amen. Now, here's the thing. Who thinks, where is it? Who, who thinks that what I did there, which was a, I did it very badly, especially if you were sat on the front row, you know. <laughs> who thinks that that was magic? 
No, it wasn't much. Who thinks it was a good trick? Oh, okay. Well, it's a magic trick. And what a magic trick means is it's meant to trick you into thinking it's magic. That's what a magic trick is. Who thinks that was magic? No. Who thinks it was a good magic trick? It's a trick. Okay. When Jesus healed that man's hand, it wasn't magic, was it? And it wasn't a trick. when God heals us right, when we come to him it's not magic and it's not a trick and it's not a trick we can do either it's a miracle it's something only God can do now if you had a miracle in your life that was wonderful that was wonderful because God has said I've forgiven you I've washed you clean and I've made you right with me forever. Children, I've got an idea. Right. I don't know if you've ever asked Jesus you know, to forgive you. You know, and you've owned up to all the things you've done. Right? That's wonderful. But every day we do things wrong. Right? And do you know what a good idea is? Before you get in bed at night, or before you close your eyes and go to sleep, tell God some of the things you've been doing. I was on this skateboard as a boy, you know, I really was good, but I don't want to No. Oh, good fun you'd have. Tell them about some good things that, that have happened in your life. Tell them about if there's any bad things that happened in your life, some sad things that have happened in your life. <coughs> tell them about them. But don't forget to tell them about the bad things. Don't forget to tell them about the things that you did that you know you shouldn't have done. And don't forget to tell them about the things that you should have done and didn't. Because Jesus didn't come to tell us off. <laughs> or did he come to let us off? He came to let us off. I think we've got a final hymn. So um, I don't know what time I'm using to finish, but this is it. This is the final thing. <laughs> Right, so thanks for it. Thanks for it. And then I'll just pull you for it. Thank you. So we're going to stand singing in Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. <laughs>
we've been talking about deceiving ourselves and tricking ourselves and we realize that we are the easiest people to trick we trick ourselves Lord we like to pretend that we're better than we are and that what we the way we live doesn't matter if we're not quite right oh but Lord you gave your life for us it really matters it really matters help us to know deep down in our hearts Lord just how much our, how much it meant for you to take away our sin have mercy on us Lord we deserve judgment but we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ for every day Lord we want you we need you to speak to our hearts afresh we need to be obedient we need you to help us and we ask that you help us as we make a commitment to follow you as best we can and we thank you again for your love for us in the Lord Jesus Christ Amen <laughs>